event. Uh, each year I do an annual market outlook as shown by the title. And uh, before we start, let me give you the legal stuff here. Uh, I want you to read this and you're going to be tested after the webcast. <laughs> uh, just to remind you that trading and investing has risks. And if you want to read this whole thing, if you don't have anything to do with your life, uh, go to this link here at www.cantletrust.com backslash dis uh, disclosure. Just, you know, it's kind of reminded you uh, the risk involved with trading, whether it's or investing, whether it's stocks or ETFs or futures uh, or any other market <laughs> for that matter. And what we're going to be doing in this webcast and we will be making a recording out of it is go over some of the major markets kind of giving you a sample of what we do uh, many times in our member site mycamelcharts.com I'll give you details about uh, the uh, member site it's a great way to keep on track of the markets and education uh, so what I'm going to start with is the S&P and here we have a daily chart of the S&P and some interesting things, let me, before I show you what to look for and my prediction on the S&P, and although the Dow is talked about a lot in the news, in this, uh, uh, the news media, remember the Dow is only 30 stocks and the S&P is a little broader based. So I like focusing on that to get a better sense of the market. Uh, so first of all, let's look at a couple of things here. What do we have here? One there. One here, and one here. These are doji, right? A doji is when the opening and the closing are the same. And a doji tells us the market is tired. And what's fascinating about these doji, plural doji, by the way, are doji, uh, is that the second doji here and the third one are confirming resistance area. So especially the third one over here took on extra significance. And just as a heads up, you could use the high of a doji as a potential resistance area. So in a breakout above that resistance, it would be a, a bullish breakout. And let me ask you something else here. We'll do a little education here. Now here we have a doji. I just showed you right over here uh, on, it looks like November 29th. Why is this doji that I'm circling here less ominous than the doji a couple of sessions after that doji. And right, it's because the second doji is confirming a resistance area. So one of the key concepts that you learn in our education is uh, the importance of looking not only at recognizing the candlestick signals, but in relation to where that candlestick signal emerges. Because you could have a doji in one area where it's not as important as you have a doji in another area. But let's look at the S&P from a longer term perspective. One of the misunderstandings about candlesticks is that you can only use them for short term trading. And that is not true. I personally use them for my own investments. Uh, and I would strongly suggest you also consider adding candlesticks to your investment strategies, whether you add them to Western technicals or even fundamentals. So let's look at this, the recent sell-off we had here. Let me go back here. So from the high to the low, you know, we've had a really big sell-off, about a 19% sell-off from here to over here. So what I wanted to do is kind of see where we've had prior sell-offs. So all the sell-offs pretty much here, we have early 2018, or anywhere between 9 and 14%. But let me show you something interesting. So here we had early 2018. So big sell-off, another sell-off over here. Okay, the, the sell-off here stopped right around over here. Now let me just kind of go back. I'm, this is a weekly chart now. And let me show you something interesting. From uh, 2015, summer to fall of 2015, Another sharp sell-off, again, just kind of, you know, for anywhere from 9 to 14%. I'm not sure why it keeps on doing this. All right. And then another sell-off in early 2016. But let me show you something really interesting about all those sell-offs. Let me get back here. Okay, so let's look at the one in early February. 
through here. So I'm going to make a horizontal line. So the market rallied and got right near these lows again. So in other words, successfully made a double bottom. Now let's do the same thing going back to the prior sell-offs. Again, we're looking at a weekly chart. Okay, big sell-off. This is a uh, bearish engulfing pattern. Sorry about that. Okay, so a bearish engulfing pattern here. This was potent because it confirmed a resistance area. One of the key things to keep in mind is if a candlestick confirms support or resistance, the odds of reversal are much higher. But the point I wanted to get to is this market sold off, right? Then rallied and rallied a little bit and look where that second sell off stopped, right near the lows of the first one. Okay, let's move back into early 2016. The classic hammer. This is also this is almost a strict criteria hammer. That's a hammer with a white a green candle that closes right near the high. Um, and if you have any questions about what strict criteria are, I'll give you uh, Paul's email address. You can contact him to find out what strict criteria candle signals are. But anyway, look at this. So essentially, the lows the the lows made. In 2015, after anywhere from a 9 to 14% correction, then again, the lows made in early 2016 were double, this was a double bottom in 15, a double bottom in 2016. Okay, successful test of lows. The most recent low that we had before the sell off, okay, back in early 2018, the low here got very close to the prior low. So three, the prior three major corrections all successfully retested or nearly retested their prior lows. So what that means is if the scenario holds, we're not out of the woods yet, folks, because the route, like the rally here early in the year, we came back and corrected near the prior lows, the same thing in 15 and 16. That means that if that scenario works as it did the last three major corrections, we should be coming back and testing the lows or near the lows again. So that is my outlook. Uh, you know, I'm not saying how far up we're going to go again, but my feeling is we will be coming back to test the low. And the more often a low is tested, the more solid the base is for a rally. But for now, I don't think this rally uh, in the longer term is sustainable, and I'm looking for a retest of the lows. Okay, so that's my outlook on the S&P. And what you see on the left here, by the way, let me make sure you can see that, is each day uh, we do a recap of these markets and other markets each and every day in my calendarcharts.com. That's our paid member site. And I'm going to go through some of these now. I'm not going to go through all these. Uh, so we looked at the S&P and we'll look at, you know, some of the other uh, key markets as well. I know a lot of you will look at the, the Dow. So let me just do that one very quickly. Uh, once again, I want to look at it from a weekly perspective to give you a sense. The same thing happened in the Dow as the S&P. So we could see in 2000 and early 2018, we had a retest of the lows here. So I'm looking for the same thing to happen again on the Dow, as I mentioned with the S&P. Uh, yes, it could rally some more. I don't see any bearish candle reversal signals yet. In fact, on the Dow, the market broke above a resistance area. And one of my favorite strategies is using what I call the change of polarity, old resistance becomes support. So near term, I'm looking for some support around 24,000 in the Dow. Uh, but yes, the market might rally. But ultimately, I think we will be coming back and retesting the lows that we had earlier. Uh, I mean, late last year in the S&P. Now, we also 
concentrate a lot on Forex. You can see each and every day we do these four Forex markets and sometimes even more. And so what I want to do is just look at the Australian dollar because that was pretty interesting. Show you one of the strategies and how we could use the change of polarity. So uh, we had a, this is a daily chart and all the strategies I'm talking about now can be used on all time frames. You see, we looked at weekly charts. You could use this on an intraday chart. Uh, and now uh, we're looking at a daily. So one of the things I like looking at is the more often support is tested, the more likely it is to become resistance. So we could see, I'm going to make a line here. Okay. Support, support, support. Once it breaks, it becomes resistance. So the market closed under the support area. And notice the next session, what became resistance, that old support area. However, the session after that, the market pushed above the Australian dollar versus the US dollar, pushed above that resistance area. And that forms a crack and snap. For those who have my education, a crack and snap is when the market breaks support and it's up to the bears to defend that bearish territory. As soon as the market gets above that broken support area, a resistance area, it's a crack and snap. And what's nice about that, we have a target. And the target is the most recent high. So the minimum target, when I talk about the recent high, it's when the sell-off began. So the minimum target is here, which we just about reached. And the more liberal target is over here. So one of the great things is when you uh, have our education, you'll learn not only about reversal signals, but how to get price targets. And this is a nice example of uh, getting a price target using the crack and snap. Okay, we're going to look at some other key markets. We're getting some requests on, I know crude, we're looking at a continuation contract. So crude, this is a classic bottom reversal signal in crude. We're looking at a daily chart. Here's a bullish engulfing pattern where green candle wraps around a red real body. As soon as you get a bullish engulfing pattern, that becomes a key support area. Now the long-term trend in crude, I'm gonna put up a weekly chart, is still obviously down. Okay. But what, what's interesting is on this weekly chart, looking at a weekly chart, look at the lows made in 2017 in the summer. Everybody recognize that? Green wrapping around a red, bullish engulfing pattern. And what did I mention before about the low of the bullish engulfing pattern becoming a support? You move this line over here. Let's make it a little bit more exact. And within maybe 50 cents or so, that support area held with another bullish engulfing pattern on the weekly. So what was fascinating about crude is that not only did it have a bullish engulfing pattern on the weekly chart, but it also formed it on a daily chart. So that was telling you is a significant bottom reversal. And what I'm looking for now is, again, change of polarity as first resistance. And crude is one of the markets we follow, we, we follow every day. So we take a multi-tested support area. Now for change of polarity, it has to be support and resist, uh, resistance tested more than one. So one, two, three. Market broke under it, look what became resistance, right around that level. So I'm looking for strong resistance around 55, 55 and a half in crude. Again, this is a continuation contract and key support remains down at that, the low is made on that weekly chart at uh, $50, just to show you, yeah, I'm sorry, at $42. So you can see how looking at different time frames can really add a lot to the success in calling re bottom reversals. Now we're gonna be looking at, let's look at some other markets. We've got some requests. Uh, one of the things we do is twice a week, we ask for members of mycalendertrust.com which markets they want us to analyze. And we do a real-time real analysis. We are obviously make it as a recording also for those who can't attend the session. But here are some of the more popular markets. So I want to go through some now. Okay, we'll look at K 
King. Apple. And by the way, you know, Apple, we're going to look at a weekly chart. Uh, and a lot of these markets, we look at Apple, Google, obviously the high price stocks and a lot of you trade options with it. And each and every week on my calendar charts, we do an option outlook. But when we talk about even an outright, um, you know, discussion without focusing on options, keep in mind that the most important thing for an option trade, even more important than implied volatility, is knowing what trend the market's going to be. And then candles are great at giving us trend. So here on the weekly chart on Apple, notice the dark cloud cover became a resistance area. Uh, but let's look at what's going on now on the daily chart. So one of my favorite candlestick indicators is a window. And a window, as you probably know, is the same as a gap in Western technicals. So a falling window is what we had here. And the whole window, the whole gap is resistance with the top of the window, a important resistance area. Now today, Apple closed marginally under above that window. Uh, not a decisive break, but it's very important that I think Apple hold above the 155 area to uh, say that we obviously broke above a resistance level. But the problem with Apple is that whenever we look at p where people bought, this is why the change of polarity works so well. Anybody who bought here, 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 once the market broke under it and the market starts coming back, all the buyers here are losing money and they're gonna be thrilled to break even. So the buyers here become sellers. So we have lots of resistance areas on the way up because of the change of polarity. Buyers here start losing money, become sellers here. Same thing over here. Okay, change of polarity. Buyers here, see what happened when it broke and it got up here where the market had resistance. So I think the, uh, Apple does not have a sign of a major bottom yet based on candles. And we're looking at zones of resistance, the change of polarity here, over here, a falling window over here. So it's gonna have a real, I think, uh, issue moving higher and at least in big bounds. But as far as key support is concerned, we it did hold a key support level so far based on the weekly chart. And we're gonna look at all the support here from the summer of 2017 week after week after week, uh, right around the 140 area. So I'm looking at that as a major support area, but no major reversal signals yet. This is not a piercing pattern. A piercing pattern is when a green candle gets more than halfway into a red candle. That sometimes is a reversal signal. We did not have that in Apple. So I don't see any real signs of a bottom reversal yet in Apple. Okay, let's look at uh, another requested market, we'll look at an ETF. And keep in mind that even if we're not looking at a market you trade, the idea of this education and our ongoing education is that uh, you get you know, ideas, you get education, how you could apply the strategies in your own markets. Okay, we're right now, uh, we're looking at the technology sector, a very popular sector. Let's look at a weekly chart to see what's going on on the weekly. And what I'm looking at, this is not a piercing pattern because the green candle did not get more than halfway into the red candle. Uh, oh, this was absolutely classic. Now, when we talk about bearish signals, it doesn't mean necessarily going short but you could use it as a time to lighten up or exit longs or at least move a protective stop. Look at this, bearish engulfing pattern, red wrapping around the green, what's it confirming? A resistance area, this weekly chart said about five weeks ago. As I mentioned before, once uh, you have a bearish candlestick signal confirming support or resistance, the odds of reversal are much higher. Another way you could use a bearish candlestick signal confirming resistance or support. If the market closes above this, if it closed above this resistance area, that'd be a strong bullish breakout. You could then use the change of polarity. So in other words, say the market closed at 77, then that should mean if you buy it, your protective stop should be under the change of polarity, this old resistance area of 76. So lots of great strategies 
you could use when you understand candles with Western technicals. So what I'm looking at here is, uh, let me do this here. This is actually called a bull sash pattern. I'm not going to get into that now, but it's a nice bullish candlestick signal. Uh, but on the perspective here, Okay, so here we have the change of polarity. The market got a little above it, but I'm looking this as a resistance area right over here. So we're at resistance, not major resistance, but something to keep in mind. Okay, what do we have here? A doji, right? Now, why am I not too nervous on that doji? Right, it's a new high close for the move, correct? Just like this one is. Let me do this doji over here. That's a doji, right? But is it, is it confirming resistance? No, it's above a resistance area. Here we have a doji, look at this. This is the importance of education. This is why you know, we invite you to look at our edu education. Here we have a doji, is it confirming a prior high? Yes. And look at this, and the market did sell off right after that. However, the doji here at two and the doji at three are new highs for the close. To me, bearish confirmation of this doji would only come on a close under this doji. So any close, I would say under 63, let's say 70, to me would be short-term bearish in this particular index. Again, I'm sure many of you are not trading uh, the technology sector, but all the strategies that I just went through, looking at the doji, if it's com conferring support, uh, resistance, or if it's at a new high or not, you can use in your own markets if you happen to see a similar scenario. Okay, let's look at Amazon. Look at a couple of other markets. So not surprisingly, same thing that we saw in the technology sector. Uh, we have a doji, but it's a new high close, so I'd say any close under oh, uh, 1675 to me would be a short-term bearish uh, indication of uh, for Amazon. This is a classic bottom reversal. This is pretty rare. Okay, this is a, a, um, a morning doji star where you have a black, a red candle, and then you have a doji which doesn't touch the first or the third candle, and then a long green candle telling us the bulls are taking over. This is a three-step process. The bears are in control. The doji tells us that there's more of an equilibrium now. It's not a bottom reversal signal, but there's some confusion. Was there any confusion on the day before? There's the daily chart. No, the bears were in charge. Now there's kind of an equilibrium between the bulls and the bears. And there's also a lot of confusion, the long upper shadow and the long lower shadow. This is called the high wave doji. It shows us the market's confused. And as I mentioned before, it wasn't confused the session before. So even here, you're getting a small hint of a bottom reversal, not enough to go long, but maybe, you know, for those of you who are doing bearish option trades to think about uh, lightening up on, you know, maybe a long put or maybe, you know, legging into a spread because now the bears are not in full control and now the bulls are taking over. So this should be a, a, a potentially a major support area. And as far as resistance, I think it's pretty easy to see. Okay, remember when we talked about the S&P in our first chart, how if you have a doji, it can become a resistance area, the high of the doji, look what became resistance. So this to me is a major resistance area around 1800 in, uh, in Amazon. So, um, let me look at one more and then I'll give you, because we're getting a lot of questions about how you can get more information about getting daily updates, how to get chart challenges where we give you tests uh, to test your college, uh, your candle knowledge. So here we're looking at gold, GLD. And just to give you a, a sense of where I think major resistance is, we're looking at a weekly chart. And once again, we're looking at change of polarity. See, so support all the buyers here, right around 124. Okay, we're looking at uh, an ETF. Once the market closed under it, 
people say, oh no, I'm losing money. If it gets to about break even, I'm gonna sell it and look what became resistance. So look at around 12, 123, 124 and a half as major resist as a major resistance area. And just to show you how easy it is to combine candles with Western technicals. Right now, what's forming is an ascending triangle where we have horizontal resistance. And an ascending, let me move this over a little bit here. Whoops. You make a trend line. Yeah, the problem is the, uh, the go to webinar thing. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we're going to have to do it this way. Sorry. And then we'll get back to the original thing. So, and we have an ascending support line. So, this is a classic ascending triangle. And what's nice about it with Western Technicals, you take the height of the triangle. And if the market breaks above the triangle on a close, you take the height, which is oh, about, what are we looking at? Around two points and you add it to the breakout. And let me go back to full screen again. And you add it to the breakout and that would give us, you add two points to 122.50, you get a target to 124.50. Question, if the market closes above 122.50, what should be the first support? Remember the change of polarity? Right, the change of polarity. So I just wanted to give you a little sense of, you know, everything you'd be getting with education, give you my market outlook. And it's more, again, more than the market outlook. It's a, uh, uh, I wanted you to see how we analyze the markets, how you could be analyzing the markets. And just very quickly, I just want to kind of go over exactly what mycalendertrust.com is, because in this market, we have to be able to profit. It was easy or easier to profit in up markets. But with the extreme volatility, now we need to be able to profit in any market condition up or down. And that's what, uh, and this is somebody who can't profit in the down market. Uh, and this is what mycalendercharts.com is all about. So it's our member site where we give you the ability so you know that you never trade alone. And each day we do, for example, we do a trade setup of the day. Every day you'll be getting a trade setup and you don't need to be there live. You'll have a recording that you can go to later in the day. Uh, one of the neat things we do is a chart of the day. Our goal is not only keeping you up to date on all the markets, the major markets, the S&P, the Dow, uh, four currencies, crude, gold, which we do every day and so forth, but to, test your knowledge to make sure you have a firm foundation in understanding candlesticks in combination with Western technicals and risk management. So we give you a chart of the day where we say, what do you see here? What candle signal is this? What would you do and why? And you put it on pause and then you hear the answer. It's one of our favorite uh, benefits. Uh, we do a candle strategy session twice a week. I mentioned that before where you send us your markets and we will analyze them for you to give you potential trading ideas that you could use the very next session. We give you major support and resistance areas and what to look for. Uh, we also do an options outlook for you option traders. We do international markets once a week um, and uh, a chart challenge. I had mentioned that before, okay, where we test your knowledge. And actually the chart of the day, I should go back here, I made a mistake. The chart challenge is where we give you a test. The chart of the day is where we give you education. Just for example, like I told you about looking at the doji and how uh, you should be looking at doji in context if it's above a, a resistance area. So a chart of the day is an educational piece. Uh, we also have lots of resources. For example, we have, uh, uh, if you forget what a piercing pattern is, you have the ability to go to a link and see all the major candlestick signals. We show you what it looks like, a real world example, how you could use a support or resistance, and we give you the psychology behind the pattern. And as Barry said, before I joined mycalendertrust.com, 
I'd make gains in the market and then lose them back. <laughs> that sounds really familiar, doesn't it? My trading has become more consistent with more winning trades and fewer losing trades over the past few months. So go to this link here, www.cantletrust.com backslash mycc. And we have added some actual examples of strategy sessions, video examples, a chart challenge, and trade setup of the day, just to give you a little bit of insight of what we do when you become members of our candlecharts.com uh, community. We do have special discount pricing ending soon. And any questions, for example, you know, if you want to know how to find out more about a strict criteria candle signal that I alluded to earlier in the session, or any questions about any of our products and services, including uh, all the resources at mycc, mycandlecharts.com, contact Paul at candlecharts.com. So thank you for joining me and have a great rest of the day. And may the candles continue lighting the path to greater profits.